Hello everyone and welcome back to the Edgewater Avenue YouTube channel. In today's video, we are making the Ava play suit, which is a romper slash onesie slash unitard slash jumpsuit, whatever you prefer to call it. This is meant to be athleisure slash active wear, but you could totally make this out of swimwear fabric and make it into a swimsuit. Just one word of warning before you do that, the shorts are not double lined, but the top is. So if you plan to make it into a swimsuit, just consider lining the bottom, just to make sure nothing bad happens. For materials you will need, one and a half yards of active wear or swimwear fabric. You want your fabric to have somewhere between 50 and 75% stretch, and I suggest a four-way stretch fabric. 50% stretch will get you more of a compressive feel that might be a little bit trickier to wiggle on and off, but it will really snatch you and keep everything in. 75% stretch is gonna feel more relaxed and soft, kind of like a second skin feel. Either way is fine. And as far as fabrics that I recommend for this, there are two that are both from Blue Moon Fabrics. I am an affiliate with Blue Moon, and so you can use my code EdgewaterAv at checkout for a discount. So the two fabrics from Blue Moon that I've been making this with are the Synergy fabric, which is gonna be that buttery soft second skin, 75% stretch. Their Synergy fabric comes in a bunch of different colors and it's most similar, I'd say, to like a Lululemon Align fabric, if you're familiar with that. And the second fabric is their Superflex Heavy Compression Athletic fabric. And that one is gonna be snatched, holding things tight, it is 50% stretch. So both are really great options. I've made some out of both. You will also need some quarter inch elastic. If you're making this into a swimsuit, you'll want to use rubber swimwear elastic, or if that's just what you have on hand, you're welcome to use rubber elastic. But here I'm using braided elastic. This style has some straps in it that are going to need to be turned. So you will need a loop turner or a safety pin. And this pattern comes with an option to make a shelf bra. So there are some materials you'll need if you plan to do that. So if you're making a shelf bra, you are also going to need a quarter of a yard of stretch power mesh fabric. This can also be found at Blue Moon and a half inch Pico elastic. You could also use one inch if you want a little more support, but you might want to add a little more allowance to the bottom of that shelf bra. And it doesn't necessarily have to be Pico elastic, just any elastic that has a plush side so it's comfortable against the skin. And you can include some cut pads if that would make you more comfortable. So the last thing you'll need is the PDF pattern for the Ava play suit. You can get that at edgewaterab.com. Like I mentioned, this pattern comes with an option for a shelf bra, and it also comes with four different inseam lengths, all the way from two inch to eight inch. So before you get started, you are going to want to choose your inseam length and trim your pattern. So moving on to the pieces that are included. There are six pattern pieces included. Here is the breakdown of what is what. This same image is also available inside the PDF under the pieces included section. You'll notice that most of these pieces are to be cut on the fold, which is why there's only half of that piece included. There are three different gussets in this pattern that are all labeled piece five, and you're going to choose just one of them based on what inseam length you choose. For this tutorial, there is a quarter inch of seam allowance everywhere, except for the very last step when we go to hem the leg lines. So if you don't hear me mention seam allowance, it is a quarter inch. All right, so now we can begin cutting. So first, here is a official cut list for your reference. This is also inside the written directions if you wanna have something that won't go off the screen in a couple seconds. Most of the pieces we're going to be cutting on the fold, but the back bottom piece, we're gonna be cutting to mirrored. So I'm just gonna go through my cut list and cut each piece one by one. And since I'm doing a shelf bra, I'm only cutting one of the top front piece but I'm still cutting two of the top back piece. And for the bottom front, I am cutting one on the fold. But for the bottom back, I am cutting two pieces mirrored, like I mentioned earlier. And you can do this at once by just folding the fabric and then cutting two pieces at once. This will make sure that they're mirrored. Then for the gusset, you're just going to cut one, but pay close attention to the grain line because you want the greatest stretch to go horizontally. And this is marked on the pattern. But if you're trying to conserve fabric and not create more useless scraps, 
You can cut this so that the stretch goes the other direction. Just don't cut it off grain so it's wonky. Have it either perpendicular or parallel to the selvage. There are also two straps and the measurements for those straps are included inside the pattern. And like I mentioned, we are going to be doing a shelf bra in this tutorial. So in my shelf bra pattern piece, I'm going to be following the cut list and cutting one in my power mesh and one in my self fabric. Now we have all of our pieces and we can begin construction. Starting off with shelf bra prep. Now, if you're not making a shelf bra, you can completely skip this part. I will put up a timestamp for when you should skip to. So first, match your two shelf bra pieces, one power mesh and one self, together so that wrong sides are together. We're going to be using a basting stitch and just basting all around the borders of this shelf bra. A basting stitch is a long straight stitch that's meant to be temporary, and its whole purpose is essentially that of pins. We're going to tack this fabric together now so that later on when we go do different things with it, it's not sliding out of the way and creating weird puckering. So using my basting stitch, I'm just going to sew around every edge of this bra. And remember, right sides are not together like they usually are in my tutorials. This is going to be wrong sides together. Then once we have our bra tacked together, we are going to attach our Pico elastic. So first you're gonna trim your elastic to the recommended measurement inside the pattern. And the length of the elastic is going to be shorter than that bottom edge of the shelf bra. So that means we're going to have to stretch the elastic as we sew. So pin your Pico elastic onto the self side of the bra. So that's gonna be this navy blue fabric. And you want that flush side facing up because this side is gonna be against your skin. To make sure that I'm stretching correctly, I'll usually mark the center of the elastic and the center of the bra, pin that down, and then pin either side of the bra. Then using a stretch stitch of your choice, sew down the elastic onto the bra. Here I'm using a stretch stitch that comes with my machine. It's also called a lightning stitch, but if you don't have that, you can do a zigzag instead. This bra has quarter inch of seam allowance on the bottom, so you'll want your Pico elastic to come up over the bra by a quarter inch. And when you sew, you're going to be focusing that stitch onto the inner side of the Pico elastic, not the side with the scalloped edge. After you sew that Pico elastic down, there's gonna be that excess allowance left on the underside. So you're gonna take some scissors and very carefully trim off that excess. So that completes the shelf bra prep. So now we're gonna continue by focusing on our top section, beginning with the front pieces. So if you do not have a shelf bra, you're going to have two identical front pieces. But if you do have a shelf bra, you'll have one front piece and then one shelf bra. So either way, you're going to match these with the right sides together. And we are going to sew along the armholes and the neckline and attach elastic. And before I go in and do my final stitch and add elastic, I'm first going to do a basting stitch. And you're gonna see me do this a ton in this tutorial. If you want to be better at sewing, a basting stitch is the best thing you could possibly do. Like I said earlier, it takes the place of pins, but it just does better than pins because as you sew, you can see if you're making any mistakes and it's super easy to take back out if you do. So once this part is basted, I'm gonna go in with a four thread overlock stitch and my elastic foot, and I'm going to attach elastic and sew down these seams. Sewing this elastic, you don't want to stretch at all. You want the elastic to be equal to the seam length. If you don't have an overlock machine, you're going to be using a zigzag stitch, and that goes for everything in this tutorial. If I say overlock, you do zigzag. An overlock is nice to have because it's just more thread, and so it feels more secure, but it's definitely not required. And if you've never sewn with elastic before and you have some questions, I have an entire series of elastic videos, including one about the elastic foot that I'm using. So I will make sure to link that for your reference. 
Moving on, we're going to take our two top back pieces and we're going to match these with the right sides together. And again, sew and attach elastic to the armholes and the neckline. This is the exact same process, basting stitch first and then overlock or zigzag to attach that elastic on. Now we are going to make our straps. So take your straps and fold them in half lengthwise with right sides together, and then sew and attach elastic onto the raw edges. Again, I'm using that same four thread overlock stitch, or you can use a zigzag. Then once those straps are done, you're gonna take your loop turner or safety pin and flip your straps all the way to the right side. So now we're going to insert our straps into our top piece. Starting with the front, you're gonna keep it inside out. Insert each of the shoulder straps into the strap openings and pin them down. Then using a straight stitch, you're gonna secure each strap into place. There is a quarter inch of allowance on the strap itself as well as the strap opening. And when I'm sewing these straps, I usually do one row of a straight stitch and then right above it, I'll do a second row. I just feel like it's more secure. Once you finish sewing these straps in place, you're gonna get out your scissors and trim the excess. This is a super important step because it's going to make those straps look really clean when they're turned to the right side. Now we're gonna sew the straps into the back piece. So first, flip the front piece all the way to the right side. The back piece should still be inside out. And quick note, it looks like I don't have elastic on one of the armholes of the back piece. I just accidentally sewed it onto the wrong side. Don't make that mistake. It'll make your seams all wonky. Anyways, place your front piece facing so that the right sides would be together. So here on the back piece, my right side is up and I'm gonna place my front piece so that my right side is up. Then insert the other end of the straps into the strap openings on the back piece. Again, sew these down and then trim the excess. So now our straps are attached and we're now going to sew the side seams of the top. And the way that this is laying when we went to go attach the straps is actually perfect. You are going to tuck that front piece up into the back piece and then align it at the side seams. If this has been done correctly, then your right sides should be together. So pin along the side seams and we are gonna sew down all four layers of fabric to attach these side seams together. Something that I didn't show and I don't know why because I've said how important a basting stitch is, is before you do the side seams, you're going to sew down the sides of just that front piece. Whether you have a shelf bra or you have two layers of that front piece, sewing in the inner two layers before worrying about all four is gonna make it a lot easier. So I didn't show that, but you really should do that. So when we do go to sew the sides, you're going to use a stretch stitch of your choice. And there is a quarter inch of seam allowance. Even before I do my final stretch stitch, I'm gonna do another basting stitch, and then I'll go and do my lightning stitch. After the side seams are sewn, trim the excess. Again, this is going to leave a really clean look when it's turned to the right side. Then before we move on, we're going to do a quick little basting stitch to prep this piece for when we attach it into the bottoms. So using a basting stitch, you're just gonna sew all in that waistline. So the top piece is all finished and now we can go focus on the bottom. First, we're going to attach the gusset onto the front bottom piece. There are notches on these pattern pieces that you are welcome to use. If you're doing the two inch or the four inch gusset, the end of the gusset piece will line up with the end of the leg lines. But if you're doing the six inch or eight inch gusset pieces, the gusset actually tapers off before it reaches the end and there are extra notches for that purpose. So on the longer lengths, if you're doing one of those, make sure to mark that extra notch so that you know exactly where that piece is going to taper off. Here, I'm using some pins to mark my notches on my front inseam and on my gusset. Then place the gusset onto the front piece, matching right sides together. Use pins or clips and match the notches as you go.
Then use an overlock stitch or a zigzag stitch and sew the gusset onto the front piece. This is gonna be another important one to use a basting stitch first before you do your final stitch. So here I am doing that. And then you're just gonna go in with a classic four thread overlock stitch or a zigzag stitch. No need to add elastic here. So now get out the two back bottom pieces. These are the ones that you cut to mirrored. Match them with right sides together. Then using an overlock or zigzag stitch, you're gonna sew the center seam to attach these pieces together and make one big back piece. Our next objective is to attach the front and the back pieces at this gusset. So place down the back piece with the right sides facing up, then place down the front piece with the attached gusset onto the back piece so that right sides are together. Mark your notches and pin or clip the gusset to the inseam of the back piece. Then using an overlock or a zigzag stitch, attach the gusset to the back piece and that will finish up this inseam area. So again, if you're doing the two inch or four inch inseams, you're just gonna match the end of the gusset with the ends of the leg lines. But for that six or eight inch inseam, it is going to taper off. And with the way that the allowance is calculated, you will smoothly transition from the end of the gusset into attaching the leg lines. So here is what that looks like. Now we're going to sew the side seams of the bottom and this is as simple as matching with right sides together and sewing an overlock or zigzag stitch down either side. Once you're finished, you will have some shorts and we are all ready to attach the top in. So first, take your shorts so that they're inside out. Keep your top so that it is right side out. Then flip the top upside down and insert the top inside of the shorts, making sure that your right sides are together. You'll especially want to make sure that the front side of your top is facing the front side of your shorts and that the back of your top is facing the back of your shorts. Use some clips as needed and then we're gonna sew this entire waistline. Again, there is a quarter inch of seam allowance here. So I'm first gonna be using my basting stitch to make sure everything is lining up and looking correct. Then I'm gonna go in with my four thread overlock stitch and I'm going to sew the entirety of this waistline. One thing to pay attention to when you sew this seam is your center back seam is already sewn down at that gusset area. So you'll wanna make sure that that seam allowance is flipped the same way as it is down in the gusset. If you accidentally flip it the other way, it's not the end of the world, but it might be shown when you wear the garment. So if you remember, you will definitely want to face your seam allowances the same way. Afterwards, we're not gonna be sewing this area anymore. So you're going to want to come up with some sort of plan for what to do with this excess serger chain. You can do a darning needle and tuck in the chain into your stitch. Or what I do is I just fold that chain down and I just tack it down with a straight stitch on the seam allowance. So now this is pretty much a play suit, as you can see. The last thing we're going to need to do is to hem the leg lines. And you can use whatever method you prefer. There is five eighths of an inch of seam allowance here. What I like to do is overlock the raw edges and then I'll flip up the seam and top stitch it with a stretch stitch. So use five eighths seam allowance if you're wanting to match the inseam length correctly, but feel free to just hem it however short or however long you want. That completes the Ava play suit. Thank you so much for watching. Go and grab the PDF pattern at edgewaterav.com and be on the lookout because I plan to do a lot more patterns like this. This one has really inspired me to do this same thing with like different necklines and stuff but I also really want to make a tennis dress, maybe some shorts, maybe some crop tops. So yeah, stay tuned and we will do a lot more of this. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.